Okay, I just have one item for the top. Um, the secretary is on his way to Peru right now, arriving shortly. Uh, in Lima, he will meet with uh, Peruvian President Humala to highlight the importance of our growing bilateral relationship and congratulate Peru on successfully hosting the 20th session of the Conference of the Parties to the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change. He will also deliver remarks about the U.S. commitment to address the urgent threat of climate change. Additionally, the Secretary will meet with French Foreign Minister Fabius to discuss the upcoming Paris-hosted COP and a range of global security issues. He will then depart for Bogota later this evening. Hello, Lara. Hi, Jim. Uh, I'd like to start with the backlash to the Senate report on torture. Okay. Um, I understand the CIA director is giving a, a press conference shortly, so I'll try to keep some of my questions short today. Mm -hmm. But um, as I'm sure you've seen, there's been quite a response and many calls from not just people in the United States, but around the world. And today, the United Nations and Geneva uh, saying that there needs to be more um, responsibility put on people who, are, who had initiated the program, if not carried it out. Um, and I'm wondering, first, I know you addressed this yesterday, but I just want to clarify, mm -hmm. there's been no discussion within the Obama administration to prosecute um, any of the officials or people who were responsible, Well, correct? the Department of Justice has spoken to that, so I would refer you to them correct. on the specific question. The, the investigation that was closed on that some years ago is still the final word on that. There's no... I would refer to them, but there hasn't been new information from them since then. Fair enough. How would the United States react to requests by the ICC or other nations to extradite or otherwise prosecute um, people who were in charge of the program? Well, um, I think most of these questions I'm going to refer you on the legal front to the Department of Justice um, for obvious reasons. Um, I will say, and I think it's important to reiterate for everybody, that just last month uh, the administration made clear during a presentation in Geneva that we embrace the universal values enshrined in the Convention Against Torture, uh, which the United States signed in 1988 and ratified in 1994, uh, and affirms uh, the, the, and we also affirmed there, the U.S. government's deep commitment to meeting our obligations under the Convention. Uh, obviously, as we talked about a little bit yesterday, but it's worth reiterating, uh, these programs, which have been disclosed in the past, that wasn't new that they were disclosed uh, just two days ago, um, were ended five years ago. Um, and this is a, these, this report and this release of this report was an opportunity to reflect on and look back at mistakes made in the past and hopefully move forward. That's our objective. I understand. The UN um, official who's in charge of torture issues in Geneva mm -hmm. uh, said today that the United States <coughs> releasing and discussing details about the program and discussing some of these things was really only the first step towards um, complying with the conventions against torture, uh, that it, the United States needed to take more responsibility, needed to go after some of the people who were responsible in order to fulfill the other obligations. What's your response to that? Well, our view is that we are in compliance um, with the convention against torture. Obviously, there have been changes made long before this report was released. Um, to end these programs, which the President of the United States, the Secretary of State have said were not in our national security interests, uh, are not who we are. Um, obviously, I'm not going to stand up here and reflect on a retrospective of past actions or administrations, nor is that the question you're asking me. So just one more time to clarify, would the State Department block any attempts by foreign nations to extradite U.S. officials or former U.S. officials who in, were involved? In general, I certainly understand your question, but since it's a Department of Justice question and we don't even speculate on extradition requests anyway, uh, regardless of the, of the source. Thank you. In the aftermath of September 11, I know the, uh, the Department of State launched a public diplomacy uh, initiative of some sort. I can't remember the name of it, but basically to reach out to the population of the Middle East, the Arab population, mm -hmm. you know, and because a lot of questions were why they hate us, you know, all these things and so on. I wanted to ask you if there is anything that are you like that you are likely to do, you know, in response to this latest revelations of the report. So well, Said, I think um, I mentioned this a bit yesterday, but it's right. ongoing. The Secretary right. of State, a number of senior officials in the department as well as across the administration are undergoing a range of diplomacy, uh, uh, diplomatic outreach to right. partners around the world, and they're reiterating important points, including the fact that these, we believe these techniques were contrary to our values as a nation and were overall to our detriment, which is why 
Uh, the president, in his first few days in office, prohibited harsh interrogation techniques as one of his first acts. And obviously, our interest is on continuing to move forward, uh, move our relationships forward, and that's hopeful. We're hopeful that's what we can do uh, with our, our partners around the world. What what needs to be done? Sorry, just for a quick follow-up. <clears throat> what needs to be done? You think just to reassure people out there that this, you know, this, you know, this admission uh, is not sort of a an ephemeral bout of conscience or you know sorrow and so on. That it is actually it will be you know, uh, like a, a bedrock for the, for the future and so on. So it will not be involved in something like this to assure people in the Muslim world, in the Arab world, that, you know, because you are in conflict, almost, you know, perpetual conflict, there, if, if the events reoccur again and, and uh, people are taken into custody, this practice will not be conducted. Well, Saeed, our actions speak much louder than any report or any words. And the fact is these programs were ended five years ago. And the President of the United States took the action to do that. And that certainly sends a strong message to the world. Go ahead, Joe. Can I ask exactly what your obligations under the Convention on Torture are? Do you have an obligation under the Convention to prosecute people who are found to be or believed to have um, um, used employed torture tactics? Well, I'm not in a position to give all legal analysis of, of obligations, and I'm sure that information is publicly available. Um, we all underscore, uh, at this meeting uh, just a couple of weeks ago, we underscored that all personnel are legally prohibited under international and domestic law from engaging in torture or cruel, inhuman, or degrading treatment or punishment at all times and in all places. Uh, there are no gaps either in the legal prohibitions against these acts by U.S. personnel or in the United States' commitment to the values enshrined in the Convention. And the United States pledges and re-pledged just a few weeks ago to continue working with our partners in the international community toward the achievement of the Convention's ultimate objective, which is a world without torture. When so did if that's the case, sign that convention. Sorry, uh, it was signed in 1988 and ratified in 1994. So the U.S. by this, this <coughs> these actions violated those conventions during the the period from 2001 to 2006. I'm just not going to speculate on past administrations. No, but I mean, um, yeah, just following up on that. Mm -hmm. If if under if you if you are legally prohibited from engaging in torture of other people, and this was a uh, a convention that was signed in 1994, these acts were committed after that. That would suggest that, ir irrespective of whether administration has changed, this administration is, is in charge of um, looking after um, acts that happened previously, And surely. that's why we ended the programs. But what about the prosecution angle of it? I just am not going to have many more on the justice question. Well, I just wanted to ask that on the, there's also been calls in, uh, from uh, some human rights organizations as well that um, European countries who are involved or who are allowed these um, black sites to exist on their soils should also, on their soil, sorry, should also um, investigate and prosecute any um, uh, individuals and officials who allowed this to happen. What would your reaction be to that? That's not a call we're making from the United States. Go ahead, Pam. The release of this report has triggered an increase on social media of jihadist threats against the United States. Does the <coughs> State Department have any information on specific or credible threats? Uh, well, thank you for your question, uh, Pam. Uh, obviously, ISIL is one of the uh, worst terrorist organizations that has uh, consistently uh, made clear they have an interest in going after Western interests and uh, even threatening the United States. And it's, uh, they've been very active on social media and now is no different. Um, I did talk to our team uh, before I came out here. Uh, nothing has changed since yesterday in terms of the number of uh, consulates and embassies who have put out um, travel uh, advisories. Uh, that was seven yesterday. It remains seven today. Uh, we also are not aware of any specific or actionable intelligence against our embassies or uh, staff. Have any of the regarding this report? Go have ahead. any of the embassies or consulates raised their level of security within the past 48 hours? Well, we don't speak to specifics on security for obvious reasons. But again, those seven uh, consulates and embassies are that's still the correct number in terms of those who have put out information, which, as you know, we do whenever that's warranted. Uh, do we have any more on the report, or should we move on to a new topic? Go ahead. Thank you. Can we move on, on the, to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict? Sure. Um, so as you mentioned <coughs> yesterday, uh, Secretary Kerry uh, will be in Rome, will be uh, leaving for Rome to Mo, uh, on Sunday. Sunday. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell us exactly when the meeting is taking place? Is it on Monday? Where the meeting or when the meeting? When, when, sorry. Uh, it's still being scheduled, but I believe because of flight times and time changes, it will likely be Monday. Okay. 
Uh, and uh, as you know, there is a lot of activity uh, at the UN. Mm -hmm. uh, there is also a lot of speculation in the Israeli press about the content of this uh, meeting. <coughs> so, uh, could you tell us if uh, if Netanyahu and Secretary Kerry will talk about the, the, the resolutions at the UN, and if, uh, as uh, the Israeli press pointed out, if uh, Secretary Kerry would tell uh, Netanyahu that in the event of a balanced resolution, uh, the U.S. won't put its uh, veto against it? Well, um, certainly uh, the, the topic of the, uh, the range of proposals that are out there um, and the growing number of countries that are pushing for action on uh, this issue at the U.N. will be a part of their discussion, and it's part of the reason uh, that they're meeting. Um, we believe this warrants discussion with Israel, as it does with the Palestinians, as it does with a number of partners in the global community, and the Secretary has found that face-to-face -face diplomacy is often very uh, effective uh, when it comes to these difficult and complicated issues. Uh, there hasn't even been a proposal tabled, uh, so I'm certainly not going to get ahead of uh, where that stands or where what we think on different proposals because we believe that these sort of discussions and diplomacy should be private. Why are these discussions necessary now? I mean, given that there are a few um, proposals on, on the table, um, but if you ask anybody within the UN, they don't think anything's going to come of it with immediately um, and that it's still a process over the next six months. Why is this meeting necessary now? Well, uh, something happened. it's nothing more complicated, Leslie, than the fact that there are a growing number of proposals out there, a growing uh, number of countries that are pushing for action. Obviously, the UN is the, are the experts on when action might happen, when a proposal may be tabled. Um, as you know, uh, the United, many in the United States, including the Secretary and many in Europe, will uh, descend into holiday vacation for some time. So this is the secretary felt this was an important meeting to have uh, uh, while he can. But is there something that the, the secretary is concerned about that he needs to have that discussion now? Uh, he thinks that obviously given all the activity out there, it warrants a discussion and that's why he's traveling to Rome to have it. Are you, uh, have you been told by the Palestinians that they are for certain going to submit uh, a proposal because you said no proposal, you have not seen any proposal, correct? There have been a range of proposals that you all well, have reported I'm on that have that been out there. Like in a final draft. I'm not going to get into specifics of our diplomatic conversations with the Palestinians. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they've said publicly they have an interest in doing that, So, but there are a range of options out there. But you remain opposed in principle to any kind of uh, proposal at the United Nations. Well, correct? I'm not going to prejudge. That's not our policy, as you know. Um, I'm not going to prejudge a language we haven't seen yet that hasn't been tabled. Is, does the United States <coughs> still uh, you know, hold to uh, vetoing? Uh, such a proposal when it comes before? Again, I'm not going to get ahead of a proposal that hasn't even been tabled at the UN. Okay. Uh, any more on this, or should we move on? Uh, I do. Actually, go yeah, ahead. Right. You want to finish? No, no, it's okay. Uh, uh, Ireland's parliament today uh, decided to support a non-binding resolution for an independent Palestinian state. It was imme immediately criticized by Jerusalem. But um, the reason why the parliament <coughs> did it, they say, is because they wanted to jumpstart the peace process. Do you think that this is a helpful step in jumpstarting the peace process? Well, there are a couple of other countries, as you know, who right. have taken a similar step. And our general view is that um, the best way to jumpstart a peace process is for the parties to make decisions needed to get back to the table. And obviously, as we've seen over the last several months, the current situation on the ground is not sustainable. It's the only way to have a lasting peace in the region. Um, and, you know, our view is that um, these pronouncements are, are premature because we need to have the parties negotiate what the final outcome will be, even though we support uh, the uh, Palestinian state and we support the aspirations of the Palestinian people. And also, at the same time, mm -hmm. um, the foreign ministry in Jerusalem uh, had harsh, very harsh words to uh, say about this Irish um, action, uh, saying that it gave voice to statements of hatred and anti-Semitism directed at Israel in a way which we have not heard before. Do you agree with that, or do you think that is at all helpful in this process? We wouldn't characterize it in that way. Obviously, we would characterize it as I just stated it. Go ahead. Can I follow up on uh, the death of uh, Ziad Abayin yesterday? Sure. Because I don't you, have you, new you information, were, but go ahead. You don't have any new information because mm -hmm. an autopsy report was issued by the Palestinians uh, saying that he was actually killed as a result of the confrontation. Are you aware of that? Well, there are conflicting uh, statements um, from different uh, reports of autopsies, so uh, the investigation isn't, re isn't complete yet, and we'll wait for a full report to come out. 
Okay, and ha you have not spoken, or the secretary or anyone has not spoken to any Palestinian officials, including Abbas, about uh, maybe not, you know, freezing security cooperation. Our team is in close touch on the ground. Our understanding is that the PA has not made a decision on security cooperation, mm -hmm. uh, so that actually has not happened. Well, you know, today uh, the Palestinian negotiator, Saeed Barakat, said that tomorrow they will issue a statement on this, uh, stopping all uh, security cooperation uh, with Israel. Would you dis well, if that like happens, we'll, we'll talk that? about it then. But we've been in touch with our counterparts, and this hasn't happened. Uh, any more on this topic, or should we move on? Go ahead, Leslie. Um, do you have any um, reaction to the uh, Crimean leader that is that went um, on? It was part of the official delegation of Putin to India. Mm -hmm. Uh, we are troubled by reports that the delegation accompanying Putin uh, had, may have included Sergei Aksinov. Uh We understand that the Indian Ministry of External Affairs has said they were not officially aware of his uh, visit or his participation in the delegation, I guess I should convey. Uh, we're seeking uh, further uh, clarification on that. Um, so you say he may have been, you, you don't know for sure. Uh, well, I believe it's been reported that he's there. Yeah. I don't have any information to yeah. refute that. What I'm conveying is that we, our understanding is that um, the uh, Indian Ministry of External Affairs was not aware that he would be part of the delegation. Not okay. aware or not officially aware? I don't have more details than I'm that. I'm just wondering how one would interpret not officially aware. I mean, were they unofficially aware? I, I really don't have more details than that, but I don't think we have any reason to believe they were aware, but um, that's all the information I have this at this point. Would this be uh, any, in any way a violation of any of the sort of uh, ceasefire agreements that are not being properly met? But I, I don't think I would put it in those terms. I mean, obviously, India has, does not support and has been clear they don't support the annexation of Crimea. Mm. Uh, but beyond that, I, I don't think I'd put it in ter the terms of a violation. Okay. Have you seen the, um, the statement that the Indian government put out, a joint statement? in which uh, if you see that they are going to cooperate on nuclear uh, um, and then they're going to do the business uh, in national currencies like bypassing the international currency dollar so what what is your take on the whole i haven't looked at the specific statement we've seen press reporting on india concluding business nuclear and defense deals with russia uh, but not confirmation of those agreements or specifics of what those agreements would entail our view remains that it's not time as business, for business as usual uh, with Russia, um, but beyond that, we'd have to take a closer look at what these uh, agreements uh, entail. So, so uh, are you uh, putting uh, out a, um, uh, an official uh, protest or statement? Uh, I don't think that's what I conveyed. If there's more to con say, I'm sure we'll, we'll add it. Oh. On India or any more in India? Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Did, uh, were you able to get a readout about the secretary's meeting yesterday with the Saudi interior minister? I meant to do that for you, and uh, I'm sorry about that. Let me see if we can do that after the briefing. Any reaction to the uh, king of Saudi Arabia donated $88 million to the UN World Food Program? Well, we certainly support contributions to the World Food, Food Program and the generosity of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia on this and other humanitarian endeavors. On, on this topic, uh, yesterday, you know, being uh, International Human Rights Day and so on, did the Secretary raise issues of human rights and abuses in Saudi Arabia with the Interior Minister? I didn't. I don't have a readout. I wasn't in the meeting, Saeed, so we'll see if there's a readout we can provide okay, to well, all of you. Let me ask you this. I mean, you know, Saudi Arabia is not a champion of human rights. Do you hold them to different standards? Do you hold Saeed, like, with any country? Let me finish. Standards? With any country in the world, when we have concerns about their human rights record, we raise them. Go ahead, Joe. Reaction to the news today that the uh, Hong Kong authorities moved in to clear the um, tent city <coughs> and to end effectively end the protests, uh, uh, arresting a number of the, the leaders of the demonstrations as well. Uh, well, we continue to. We've certainly seen the reports. Um, we continue to encourage Hong Kong authorities and protesters to address their differences peacefully through dialogue. It's important to note that right now electoral reform in Hong Kong is still underway. Uh, the debate is ongoing, and a second round of public consultations is likely to begin in the coming weeks. Uh, we encourage Hong Kong authorities and the people of Hong Kong to work together to ensure there is a competitive process for the selection of the chief executive through universal suffrage, and certainly we're 
continuing to convey this directly to authorities on the ground as well. Are you hopeful that this uh, new round of dialogue or the ongoing dialogue will actually result in a competitive process, though? Well, we're always hopeful, uh, and we think it's important to reiterate that that's an important part of the discussion and an important part of the process. Uh, any more on this? On Hong Kong? Go ahead. Yeah, so uh, your support of universal suffrage, does that uh, mean that you would support universal suffrage contingent upon approval by Beijing of candidates? Um, I don't think that's what we said, no. Um, do we have any more on China? North Korea. North Korea, you go ahead. Recently, uh, uh, a North Korean uh, UN uh, ambassador, Cha Sung Nam, sent a letter to uh, UN uh, General uh, you know, Secretary Ban Ki moon So, regarding on the, uh, their uh, you know, denies uh, UN resolution on uh, North Korean uh, human rights. And uh, I am wondering uh, whether the U.S. thinks that uh, North Korean human rights issues should be uh, referred to uh, ICC. Um, I don't have anything new on this in particular. Obviously, we speak out frequently about uh, North Korea's abysmal record on human rights. We did an event just yesterday on this issue to uh, bring more light to the, the um, issues that those uh, who have been held in, not held in North Korea, those who kind of have escaped North Korea, I should say, um, have undergone. Um, so this is an issue that we shed light on on a frequent basis. Um, but beyond that, I don't have anything new on that particular question. Go ahead. Have you seen a report out of the Washington Times about the, the, uh, the Kim Jong-il knowing directly or ordering the, um, the abduction of foreigners? Uh, I have seen that. Uh, we all know uh, that there was an abduction program targeting uh, foreign um, individuals. Um, we're not aware of any secret document on a North Korean abduction program, which I believe was the only new information referenced in the story. There we go. Sure. Okay. There were reports that uh, the moderate opposition in northern Syria, uh, the, which the United States apparently was was paying salaries for the, for its members and so on, they stopped doing that. They were receiving $150 a month for each uh, member, and uh, apparently the U.S. stopped that. I spoke to this yesterday, Say so I don't have anything new to add. Okay, there is nothing new. Nothing new to add. Who are they? Who are the, this group? I mean, it, because apparently they are joining, you know, uh, Al-Qaeda and other I would, nasty I groups. would encourage you to, to look into that as a reporter. Any more in Sy Syria? Not or? Syria. Any more in other Syria? Topic. Okay, go ahead. On Cuba, mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure if you're aware, but some of my colleagues uh, in various places across the world put out quite a comprehensive report in the last um, 12 hours, I believe, basically detailing a program that was sponsored and paid by USAID for um, kind of to create a, a youthful movement against the Cuban government through hip-hop music. Mm -hmm. um, the leader of this uh, effort was a Serbian music promoter. Um, documents show that USAID put Cubans and its operatives in jeopardy despite warning signs. I have a couple of questions okay. um, that I'd like to put on the record, sure. but do you have any response to the story at the top? Um, I can just generally say that uh, the United States uh, promotes democratic values uh, worldwide, including closed society, uh, societies. Uh, we supported a civil society engagement uh, program focused on music as a means of legitimate civic communication. Uh, supporting artists and civic engagement is consistent with our efforts globally and consistent with our efforts in Cuba to allow Cubans to express themselves. Okay. The report found six instances where USAID contractors or Cubans working for them were either detained or interrogated. Um, who was informed about this? Who was out there protecting their safety? Um, um, well, um, the grantee, Creative Associates, which is, I think, outlined or referenced in the story, uh, provided USAID assurances that it had security protocols in place, uh, places appropriate to operating in a closed society. Uh, and would strictly employ those protocols for all professionals traveling to Cuba. We recognize that ordinary Cubans run the risk of upsetting Cuban authorities by participating in community reasons, initiatives, I should say, and for that reason these programs are managed with appropriate discretion. So it was uh, the responsibility of the grantee. Okay. One of the Serbian contractors was detained just a few weeks before Alan Gross was detained or, or arrested. Uh, the contractor had sensitive documents on his computer. Uh, this might have helped um, Gross's lawyers or family um, in some ways and whether or not they should be worried about what was happening during the USAID program as, and, and caused his, or his own arrest. Was his lawyers or his family ever made aware of this? 
I don't have any details on that. I can see if that's something we can uh, get more information okay. on. Okay, and last one. Mm -hmm. The program used a front company in Panama to hide the money trail. Documents frequently talk about cover stories and even about hiding the nature of the program from Cuban contractors we're working for, and that put them at risk. How can you say these programs were not secret? Well, a range of programs that have been uh, discussed that have been under the same contractors are Congress is briefed on them, and uh, individuals within the government who need to be aware of them are briefed on them. <coughs> Obviously, there's sensitivity uh, given um, this is a closed society and a society that has not always welcomed and encouraged uh, open expression. Um, and therefore, there's ex discretion, and appropriate discretion is used, uh, which was done in this case as well. Thank you. Go ahead. Uh, just to, to go back to Syria, do you, do you have something on, on this uh, CNN report about this, the so-called uh, French Al-Qaeda bomb maker who, who was uh, apparently killed in November, but apparently he has uh, survived? I talked to our team about it, and we really don't have any anything on it. I can follow up with them again and see if there's anything okay. to report on it. Uh, can we go to South Sudan? Sure. Uh, so unfortunately, Monday, it will be the first anniversary of the civil war. Mm -hmm. And despite uh, the trip the secretary did in May, despite the pressures your top diplomat put on, on uh, the two leaders, uh, despite the threats of sanctions, apparently there is no solution in sight. So uh, is the U.S. considering putting sex sanctions against uh, the president and the former vice president? And, and what would you respond to scholars and NGOs who say that uh, the U.S. Is, has no leadership in South Sudan, no, no leadership in the region? Well, as you know, on the sanctions question, we have a range of tools at our disposal that have been passed through an executive order several months ago. Um, we typically don't outline any individuals that we may consider. Um, I'm not going to change that policy here. Uh, there's no question this is an incredibly difficult uh, situation on the ground. The Secretary was there in May, as all of you know, and he's been engaged with the leaders uh, since then uh, very closely. Uh, President Obama and Secretary Kerry have both sent a clear message to South Sudan's leaders that they're, there's an, they have an obligation to put the interests of their citizens above their own. They've called on these leaders to honor the January 23rd cessation of hostilities agreement, engage seriously and in good faith in the peace process. We're supporting and engaging and observing, I should say, observing the uh, iguide led talks, uh, providing direct support to the uh, mediation process and pressing all sides to make necessary convention concessions. While the United States certainly has a stake in this and we're engaged in it because we care deeply about the future of the people of South Sudan, uh, we're also supporting uh, an ongoing uh, IGAD-led process, which as you know is composed of many African uh, countries who also have a significant stake in the outcome here. And I would just say simply a uh, last thing, and then we, I, don't, I may not have addressed all of your questions, but uh, just because the situation is incredibly difficult, um, it doesn't mean that um, you shouldn't continue, of course, using every tool possible to see if you can come to a more peaceful end. And that certainly is applicable to the situation on the ground in South Sudan. What, what leverage do you believe the Amer America still has in, in South Sudan? I mean, you helped create this young nation. Do you feel you still have the means to be able to <coughs> try and effect some kind of peace? Well, I think we do. Um, obviously, it's not just us, and that's important. It's many countries that are in the region, many countries that are surrounding countries to South Sudan, who also not only have a stake, but have been very en engaged and have been leading these negotiation efforts. Um, it's not just about leverage. It's about what's in the best interest of the people of this country. And I think that's part of the prevalent, prevalent part of the message of Secretary sending as well. The U.S. had threatened sanctions against South Sudan even before the Secretary's trip in May. Just going back to Nicola's question, I'm not sure I understand. Is the United States any closer to actually imposing sanctions on um, the country or it, its rebels or any individuals today than it was in May? Well, I believe we have put some in place, oh, okay. um, just not on the leaders that he, uh, the specific individuals that he referenced. And so the fact is we have that ability, and it's a broadly um, uh, written executive order, but I'm just not going to get ahead for a range of reasons, okay. including we don't predict that to give people a heads up. Iraq? Sure. Very, very quick. Uh, Germany today announced that it was sending 100 soldiers to northern Iraq to train, you know, in the fight against mm -hmm. uh, ISIS. Uh, is that something that we are likely to see more of uh, from contributions uh, from the coalition countries? Is that something that you expect to happen? 
Well, certainly I think uh, contributions on the military front are something that we expect to continue. Obviously, tr uh, contributions in terms of training, and we certainly thank Germany for their contribution in that regard, um, are part of that effort. I, I would encourage you to look at um, uh, Ambassador Brett McGurk's testimony yesterday where he gave a, an update on each of the five lines of effort. Military is one of them, but it's not just a military coalition. Uh, he also outlined uh, what we're doing as it relates to humanitarian assistance, to cracking down on foreign fighters, to uh, cracking down on financing. Those are all important components. Mm -hmm. Do you expect that the Arab countries, your partners in the coalition, Arab partners in the coalition, to send in troops in northern Iraq to do the same thing as Germany as you are? Uh, to send in troops to send for in, training? I mean, you know, soldiers so they can train and, and equip and help in the fight against ISIS? Well, obviously the United States is assisting in this right. effort on the ground. I'm not going to outline or predict for other countries what they may do. You do you think these countries like Saudi Arabia, like Jordan and so on, are holding back in terms of participating by you know, having troops uh, there and training because of any kind of sectarian <laughs> affiliation, because of there are Sunnis and they don't want to. There are a range of countries, including the ones you mentioned, that are making significant uh, contributions. My last question okay. is on Muqtada Sadr, who heads the Mahdi army. He said today he vowed uh, that he would protect all Shia places uh, in, in Iraq. Now, he was, of course, ha was a, an enemy of the United States back in 2004 and 5. Uh, but would the U.S. help these militias in any way? I haven't or, seen or his. Look the other way. I haven't seen his comments. If Iran say, helps them. I haven't seen his comments. You know where we stand on Iran. Go ahead, Pam. Different topic. Sure. Um, in Russia, the Duma has ratified a treaty on Armenia's accession to the Eurasian Economic Union, and um, Armenia would become a member of the union after the ratification procedures in member countries are completed, um, probably no earlier than January 2015. Um, and this is after Armenia changed its decision to sign an agreement with the European Union in 2013, um, which followed a meeting between the president of Armenia and Putin. My question is, how do you see the future of U.S.-Armenia political and economic relations after Armenia eventually becomes a part of this EEU? Well, uh, all countries have the right to choose their own path of economic integration and development according to uh, their national interests. Uh, no country has the right to determine the political and economic orientation of another country, nor decide which alliances and trade agreements it can join. Uh, the United States will continue to work with Armenia to support democratic and economic reforms and preserve the progress made through the U.S.-Armenia relationship. Missing read uh, uh, today's uh, meeting with the uh, uh, South Korean Unification Secretary and uh, Acting Deputy Secretary Win Selma meeting. <clears throat> Let me see if I have anything on that. I'm not sure I do. I believe it was happening sometime this afternoon. We can see if there's anything we can get you after the briefing. Go ahead. This is Jahazebali from Airway News TV, Pakistan. Mm -hmm. I have a couple of questions if you allow me. Sure. Yeah. First of all, in India, uh, there's a hardliner group who forced uh, hundreds of Muslims to convert into, into Hindus. And there are reports that they are preparing to convert 1,000 Christians into Hindus before this Christmas. Do you have anything to say to I India? haven't seen that report. I'm happy to take a look at it and see if there's any comment we have. All right. Uh, secondly, about the Pakistan and United States, uh, it looks that the relations between two, uh, both the countries are uh, getting better and better, and mm -hmm. the mistrust, uh, like things, have been sorted out. I need to comment on the ongoing military operation uh, against the terrorists because well, recently Pakistan killed some top Al-Qaeda commander there and some Taliban commanders there. And secondly, are you seeking Pakistani support uh, to get the Afghan Taliban on the dialogue table? Uh, well, on the second question, we've always said that um, any reconciliation process in Afghanistan would be Afghan-led, Afghans talking to Afghans. Obviously, Pakistan has a stake in an outcome there. Uh, we certainly uh, have discussions with them about Afghanistan and the future security and stability of the country. On the first question, I'm not sure what you were asking me exactly, but on counter ter on a Pakistan recently killed some top Al Qaeda commander like uh, Al Juma Al Ashkari and some or some more. So how do you how are you uh, how do you see that? I mean, it's uh, it's like uh, it's like helping. Uh, to, to go. <laughs> I, I don't have any confirmation from the United States. I'd, I'd certainly refer you to the government of Pakistan. Right. We obviously mm -hmm. work closely on counterterrorism operations, but beyond that, I don't have any Okay, one, la one last question, okay. please. Uh, United States is supporting the Pakistani Democratic government. 
Uh, we have seen a lot of statements on that. But there is still a big protest outside the Parliament House still going on. Do you have any concerns about, about, the, about that? It can create something, some problem for the democracy in Pakistan? I think we've spoken to this in the past. Obviously, we work closely with the elected government there. That will continue. We also support peaceful protests around the world, so I'll leave it at that. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, a very quick one. This is my last question mm -hmm. on ahead. Yemen. Sure. Um, not sure if you saw the Al Qaeda leader in Yemen criticizing the Obama administration for the rescue operation, uh, the attempted rescue mm -hmm. operation last week. Um, I won't ask you about everything that he said, but he did indicate that there had been some communications between the United States and his, he, either himself personally or his group and that he had been, first off, I'm curious if that's true, if that's something you can speak of. Specifically, he said that there had been some communications or he had made it clear that he wanted to do a prisoner exchange for some um, detainees at Guantanamo. Is that something you can speak to? Well, broadly speaking, I'm not going to dignify his claims with a specific comment. I will say in relation to your second question without getting uh, into any specifics, um, we don't make concessions to terrorists and hostage takers as a matter of longstanding policy. Uh, granting such concessions would put all American citizens overseas at greater risk for kidnapping. Furthermore, paying ransoms would only sustain the very same terrorist organizations that we are working to destroy. And as you know, because we've talked about it a bit in here, uh, la the reason we undertook this operation is because AQAP threatened to kill Luke Summers within 72 hours. Um, and along with this information and a an operational plan, we decided to move forward. Um, so our policy certainly hasn't changed. I don't have anything for you on his claims. And, and that stands for prisoner swaps, too. I mean, it's Correct. interesting because the president obviously wants to shut Guantanamo down. This could be one way to clear <coughs> Guantanamo out of its detainees. Well, there's, as you know, there was a, uh, a uh, about five, I believe, uh, detainees who were uh, sent to Uruguay earlier this week. This is something the president remains committed to. We're working hard on uh, through this building and talking to a range of countries around the world. Um, our position, as you noted, remains uh, material support for um, for uh, terrorist organizations, which includes ransom, but also includes uh, prisoner <coughs> uh, swaps, um, is not something that we partake in. But do this block of prisoners still live, um, who've been cleared for release in Guantanamo are Yemenis? So, I mean, if there was, if um, this administration was um, favourable to the idea of a prisoner swap, then these prisoners have already been cleared for re release. Well, they just haven't been released as yet. That's our policy, though. Mm -hmm. And as you know, many prisoners have also gone to other countries as well. Um, so uh, I can't predict for you what will happen with those specific prisoners. That's something, obviously, our Gitmo team works on. I think it's about on. 54 of them in Yemenis. Out of 67 cleared for release. Okay, but, but there are also many of the prisoners who have been released have not gone to their home countries. No, that's true. But, I mean, it, that some of the Yemenis have gone home. Okay, but our policy is as I just outlined it. That hasn't changed. Okay. Go ahead. Um, when Carrie testified on the Hill earlier, mm -hmm. earlier this week, one of the topics under discussion was the language that would be used for combat troops on the ground. Um, Senate Foreign Relations Committee just passed a version of the AUMF using the language a strict limitation on U.S. ground combat troops except as necessary for the protection or rescue of U.S. soldiers or citizens, intelligence operations, spotters to enable airstrikes, <laughs> operational planning, or other forms of advice and assistance. Is this language that Kerry would support? Well, uh, this just passed right before we came down here, and I haven't had a chance to talk to him or the NSC about our view on the language that passed the Senate, so let me do that. I mean, his view and the view of the President and the administration has been there's no reason to preemptively, uh, you know, tie the hands of, of the president, even though he's been clear about what our policy is and what our plans are in this regard. But uh, we will discuss and we can get something around to all of you in, in terms of a comment on the passing of the, uh, the language. Also something um, on in Congress, uh, a risk of another government shutdown. Um, are there contingency plans or is it too early? Um, State Department making any contingency plans right now? Uh, there are now. always contingency plans. <laughs> That's what we do. We're like Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts here um, in the federal government. Um, but, you know, obviously, as you know, the House and Senate are uh, still have a couple more days here, potentially, so we're not going to get too far ahead of where they are on the omnibus. Okay. Can you just... fire by rubbing two sticks together? I can't personally, but I am fairly certain somebody in this building can, if I were to guess. Okay. Thank you, Thank you guys. You.